a virtual level, you can think of little known facts uh, like uh, the fact that Hiram Thomas, a Saratoga chef, created a potato chip. Augustus Jackson, a Philadelphia confectioner, who was known as the man who invented ice cream. George Grant, the golf tee. Lewis Howard Latimer, the incandescent light bulb, the first invented and patented, the first incand uh, incandescent light bulb with a carbon filament. Charles Drew, the separation and preservation of blood plasma. M many, many of these things which I had generally known. Uh, the millions of uh, white Americans and the millions of black Americans who suffer from arthritis or who suffer from glaucoma should thank God that black people came this way. They should thank God specifically for Percy Julian, whose work in, in, in synthesizing a drug made it possible for drugs to be delivered at a, at a reasonable price to all these people who suffer from arthritis. George Washington Cobb, we could go on and on. These facts generally do not appear in American textbooks. And because they don't appear in American textbooks, Americans, generally speaking, are tremendously ignorant of who they are and of what has happened to them in this country. Not only has the history of blacks in America become a new market with growing potential, but the new interest and awareness has brought with it a rededicated search for the truth. The response to Roots showed that blacks and whites are ready to accept American history, not a racial version of his story. However, it's an altogether human tendency to evaluate the opinions of others in the light of one's own priorities. This tendency has, throughout civilization, determined the relationships between individuals, groups, and between nations. Each has presumed his own opinions to be correct and has consequently used those opinions as a yardstick with which to gauge the wisdom of others and to maintain group power and advantage. Racial relations in America is a particular victim of this phenomenon. Today, unfortunately, we're talking generally about lies agreed upon, you know. We're talking about a story which has been put together, ignoring the contributions of, of most of the people of the world, most of the people of the world are colored. And so unfortunately, we've gotten into a thing of trying to interpret history from a European perspective, from a white perspective. In America, we talk about American history and we talk, and we're talking generally about white American history. And I've said often, you know, that we glibly talk about American history, but American history, in fact, does not exist yet and will not exist until we go back to the beginning and take the contributions of black people, of, of, of the Native Americans, the Indians, and of white Americans and blend them together into one great story of what happened in this country. What is that great story? It's a story of struggle, oppression, struggle for liberation, but it's also the story of the participation in the building of this country of black people, brown people, and red people at a dimension which is, which, 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 at dimensions which are never hinted at in, in American textbooks. For example, the fact that a black man founded the city of Chicago. Lerone Bennett is referring to Jean-Baptiste Du Sable, who died in 1818, the year his state, Illinois, joined the Union. But for the father of Chicago, there is no park, bridge, or street named for him. There is, however, a Du Sable High School. An incomplete American history has created us and them, of partisanship and opposing sides. An American history that has largely left Afro-Americans out and frequently misrepresented them when it did not, has conversely made facts of such myths as George Washington and the cherry tree, which was concocted by Parson Weems. The list of distortions is long. This is no attempt either to portray all blacks in modern day history as saints. Rather, the assumption is that blacks are basically just like whites. A few geniuses, mostly average, with a liberal sprinkling of fools. Then on the individual level, you can think of little known facts uh, like uh, the fact that Hiram Thomas, a Saratoga chef, created a potato chip. Augustus Jackson, a Philadelphia confectioner, who was known as the man who invented ice cream. George Grant, the golf tee. Lewis Howard Latimer, the incandescent light bulb, the first invented and patented, the first incand uh, incandescent light bulb with a carbon filament. Charles Drew, the separation and preservation of blood plasma. M many, many of these things which I had generally known uh, the millions of uh, white Americans and the millions of black Americans who suffer from arthritis or who suffer from glaucoma should thank God that black people came this way. They should thank God specifically for Percy Julian, whose work in, in, in synthesizing a drug 
made it possible for drugs to be delivered at a, at a reasonable price to all these people who suffer from arthritis. George Washington Cobb, we could go on and on. These facts generally do not appear in American textbooks. And because they don't appear in American textbooks, Americans, generally speaking, are tremendously ignorant of who they are and of what has happened to them in this country. Therefore, what is normally called black history, according to Dr. Carter G. Woodson, is merely a missing segment of world history, or the missing pages. In 1915, Dr. Woodson founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. In 1926, he was instrumental in establishing Negro History Week. Today, this national observance has been expanded to include the full month of February, to climax the study of black people throughout the year.